Welcome to Retain, Revise, or Retire. We're coming up on 100. And we're going to get all the way to hymn 90 today. Still got a ways to go. There are, as you might know, 341 hymns to look at. So, you know, we'll get there. Anyway, our five criteria. Uh, increase faith in and worship of Heavenly Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. Teach the core doctrine of the gospel with power and clarity. Invite joyful singing at home and at church. Comfort the weary and inspire members to endure in faith and unify members throughout the church. Great, so today we're going to be taking a look at 86 through 90. All right, so <laughs> right off the bat, uh, this is one that's going to be a little tough. Because, on one hand, it is a beloved hymn, sung all the time. And a lot of people know it, a lot of people use it. On the other hand, there are so many uh, strings attached to it. Let me show you what I mean. So when I, I pull it up on my computer right here, and I go to the church music library, and I pull up hymn 86, How Great Thou Art! First sentence I get. There's no music on the page. It says, due to licensing limitations, the church cannot publish this music in this format. Bit of a red flag. So the text uh, looks like it's probably in the public domain, but the music uh, it says, traditional Swedish folk tune adapted by Stuart K. Hine. So he's the one who, who wrote the words. Wor oh, no, never mind. So words and music, copyright 1949 and 1953 by the Stuart Hine Trust. All rights in the USA, blah, 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 blah by the Hope Publishing Company, So used by permission. So never mind. The words and the music are under copyright and held by this trust and then the whole publishing company. <sighs> I hate to break it to y'all, but I don't think it's gonna be in the next hymn book. And we, I, I've mentioned this in previous videos because they were making all these different language ed editions and they would have to negotiate all these different contracts for it according to some committee members that I spoke to. So I am so sad to say this, but I'm going to say retire. Don't shoot the messenger. But, you know, I think it still can be a part of our, our church music. It might just not be in the official hymn book, but of course it's okay to like sing for a special musical number or whatever. Um, all right. Or, of course, in your home. See, this is supposed to be for home and church. So, like, you you love How Great Thou Art, just pull out the 1985 hymn book and keep singing it. All right, so next one, 87. God is Love. Words by Thomas R. Taylor. Music by Thomas C. Griggs. It's a Thomas collaboration. So this was a hard one, too, because I personally love this song. I sang in a general co conference with, with a choir. I, the, the words are incredible. The music is gorgeous. I just don't know that it is well known enough in the church. See if you recognize it. So I'm going to sing a little bit of it. See if this rings a bell. Earth with her 10,000 flowers. Air with all its beams and showers, heaven's infinite expanse, seas resplendent countenance, all around and all above. Beth is record, God is love. 
So beautiful. And each verse ends with, God, God is love. And like it talks about all the different things that, sh that prove that God is love. Like that, both the, the beauty of nature and the, the love that we feel for each other and the, the, the people around. And like uh, the second verse has a line I love says, sacred songs beneath above have one, have one chorus, God is love. Or all the voices from above sweetly whisper, God is love. It's really one of my favorite hymns, honestly. I just don't know if it's popular enough with um, you know kind of the mainstream church or you know and could be po more popular in other countries I don't know I've not done enough <laughs> research to, to know that and I, I know that's one thing that the hymn book committee is taking into account since it's supposed to be a worldwide hymn book they are seeing you know looking at the trends from all over the world so okay let's go to our criteria increase faith in Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ. Yes. Teach the core doctrine of the gospel. The God is love. Yes, that's absolutely. You know, he, we, we talk, uh, talk about all the things that are an outgrowth of God's love. His plan of happiness and sending his son. You know, all, all, the, all these things, his commandments, they're all an outgrowth of God's love. Invite joyful singing. Yeah, it, it's got a beautiful melody. Comfort the weary? Absolutely. It's a very comforting song. And then unify members. Yeah, I, I think it fits on that too. So I think it fits the criteria really well. And all right, I'm going to give it another chance. I'm going to say re retain in the hopes that it will be, uh, that people will show it a little more love. All right, that's 87. We're going to look at 88. Great God, attend while Zion sings. Uh, once again, by my man, Isaac Watts. Love that guy. I, I hear, like, from just reading about him a little bit, that he wrote hundreds of hymns in his life. We only know a few of them. You know, a few of them have really stood the test of time, but, you know, that's what you got to do. You got to write a bunch of, a bunch, bunch of things, and you'll find a few gems, I think. But, wonderful man. Uh, music by Joseph J. Danes. Okay, hmm. I'm just looking at. I don't really know this one. I'm looking at the music. It looks like a little complex, but let, let, let's take a look. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and play the accompaniment on this one since I don't really know it. <laughs> tricky there's like these there's accidentals there's naturals and flats lots of big jumps and lots of like kind of rhythmic complexity you know interesting i i, I don't know just i might worry that it might be a little bit less accessible four flats too interesting um let's look at the other verses might I enjoy the meanest place? Once again, that's a word that's changed. Mean kind of being like lowly. It doesn't mean like angry, like me, like a bully. That doesn't mean that kind of mean. Within thy house, O God of grace, no tents of ease or thrones of power should tempt my feet to leave thy door. Oh, slant rhyme there. God is our sun, he makes our day. God is our shield, he guards our way. From all assaults of hell and sin, 
from foes without and fears within. Interesting. It feels like the third ver like third verse is feels like it's from a different hymn, honestly. Like the first two are like addressing God, and then the third one is like a lesson. God is our sun, he makes our day. God is our shield, he guards our way from all the assaults of hell and sin, from foes without and fears within. Whew. That's a great verse. Um and like the other ver that other verses kind of feel a little more you know, highbrow, like we're, we're talking about no tents of ease, nor thrones of power shall tempt my feet to leave thy door. You know, it sounds very almost Shakespearean. Um, or even the title, great God attend while Zion sings. Like that's a very kind of elevated thing to say. But then the third verse is uses very simple language. Um, and I feel like it kind of steals the show. Huh. Okay, I've got an interesting recommendation on this one. I'm going to say revise. I want to get, I'm going to take out the first two verses. I'd like to see the third verse made the first verse and maybe some new verses and some new music. So like heavily revise. <laughs> but I want a song that's based on the third verse, basically, is what I'm saying. And something that's brought up a little bit more, uh, be a little bit more singable. Because this, this has uh, a lot of this kind of interesting chromaticism that I don't think is very approachable to a lot of people. Like, I'm looking at the alto part, and it's got an F flat. What's well, F flat? It's E. You know, like, it. that's a little more complicated than I think we want to get. So, interesting take, I think, but let's kind of take this and rearrange it and turn it into something that everyone will be excited to sing. And why not? The, you know, this, if we're going to do that, this would be the time. Okay, 89. The Lord is my light. Ooh, this is a great song. My son really likes this one. This is one he, I guess he's, he's listened to a lot. He like learned it at uh, FSY one year. He got to sing in the FSY choir and ever since he's loved it. So also gotten a little uh, spot in my heart. Text by James Nicholson, music John R. Sweeney. All right, the Lord is my light. The Lord is my light, then why should I fear? By day and by night, his presence is near. He is my salvation from sorrow and sin. This blessed assurance the Spirit doth bring. And then it goes into the... <laughs> the, the funny, the Lord, Lord is my light, he is my light, my light, he is my joy, he is my joy, and my song, and my song, by day, and by night, and by day, and by night. Yeah, you know, like, kind of this, like, back and forth. Oh, man. It's kind of cheesy, honestly. <laughs> it's fun, but uh, I don't know. I think... I know, in some ways, I think you could, it almost gets to the point of being a little bit silly, which, like, I don't want it to feel silly. I don't want it to feel like we're, like, just taking away from, like, the message. You know what I mean? I don't know. Tell me what you think, <laughs> whether whether you enjoy that or whether maybe not. <laughs> I, I, I think this is definitely one we're going to keep, so... Uh... It's very popular in the church. It's got a very singable, fun melody. It's got a good, um, good message. You know, we talk about the the Lord is a la uh, you know from the, I mainly thinks of the song, the Psalms like the Thy word is a lamp into my feet. You know, the Lord is my light, my has become my salvation. All those th things from the Psalms. You know what? I'm going to say on this one, revise. Um, I, you know, I would keep the first part pretty similar to what it is right now. It's got this fun sort of like lots of motion going on and i i take another look at the chorus like i don't know if you have to like necessarily get rid of everything where like every part is is still just in four part or like i wonder if you could just even do like sing the chorus in unison and have like a little like the piano can do something fun or i don't know i just i feel like 
uh, it's kind of an old timey style too that I think could be updated. So just my two cents. Let me know what you think. And finally, number 90. All right. <laughs> Interesting one. Um, this is this is one of those that I absolutely love. And I don't know that a lot of people know, which is sad. But also written by Isaac Watts. Maybe a little chance for redemption here today. Though I didn't you know, honestly, that third verse of that song, like I said, I liked it so much I want to create a whole new song based on that verse. So, or, you know, I have my man Isaac. Uh, music by John Hatton. So let me know if you let me know if you've heard this one before. Um, I've done it. I actually know this one better because uh, it, there we've done this a lot one in um, in the tap choir. From all that dwell below the skies, let the Creator's praise arise. Let the Redeemer's name be sung through every land and by every tongue. Oof. I just get chills, like, just hearing that. I don't know, it's just a, this majestic, soaring melody. I like that. Ya -da 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 -da. Like, oh, woo, I just love it. Sorry. I, I, I know I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a hymn geek. Yeah, I, we all have our favorite <laughs> pet hymns. This is one of mine. Um, and then, uh, like, the second verse. In every land begin the song. To every land the strains belong. In cheerful sounds all voices raise. And fill the world with loudest praise. Your lofty themes ye mortals bring. In songs of praise divinely sing. The great salvation loud proclaim. And shout for joy the Savior's name. Eternal are thy mercies, Lord. Eternal truths attend thy word. Thy praise shall sound from shore to shore shore till sun shall rise and set no more i love that imagery till sun shall rise and set no more like it i think it's like this idea of, of course there's going to be like light throughout the world the savior will be here but then also like that the dead will rise and to die no more i don't know i i love this hymn in a way I, it's hard to explain um, and I encourage you, if you haven't seen the, uh, like, I think you can find on YouTube, like the Tabernacle Choir singing this song. It is really stirring, like with the full orchestra and everything. I might just go listen to it right after I finish recording. I think I'm gonna. Anyway, I don't know about everyone else. I don't know if the hymn book committee is going to keep it. But I want to keep it. Retain. All right, woo, another great, great run of hymns today. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll just leave you with another hymn that I think needs to be in there. That is Be Thou My Vision. You probably heard this one. It's It's been done by a lot of um, choirs. Uh, it's been done by the Tabernacle Choir. You probably even, you probably heard the, um, the tune. A lot of Christian artists cover it. Uh, be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me save that thou art. And then, like, uh, there's there's an alternate alternate words too that I really love actually. That that tune's also been set for called "Take Time to Be Holy." Take time to be holy. Speak oft with thy Lord, <clears throat> Lord. Sorry. Um, so I would be thrilled if either version of that song made it into the new hymn book. All right. But what do you think? Uh, leave me some, leave me some comments. Uh, what would you keep? What would you, uh, what would you revise? Do you like my takes on, on Isaac Watts today? Just let me know. And please, uh, as always like, and subscribe if you enjoy this content till then till next time, keep singing. Come thou fan of every blessing.